back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. Last week video, I introduced the topic Forensic Science and Crime Scene Investigation. You had a chance to meet a forensic scientist named Gina Presley, who works at the Alabama State Department of Forensic Science. You will learn today about collecting fingerprints and how fingerprints are analyzed to solve a crime. Why are fingerprints used as evidence? Well, we each have a unique set of fingerprints. Our fingers have ridges ridges on our fingers that are raised strips that we are able to use and grip things easily. And because we have unique fingerprints, um, our fingers, or unique fingers as we would say, our fingers contain all oils, amino acid, and perspiration. And when we touch an object, we leave a print behind. And when that print is left behind, it helps the crime scene investigator be able to collect those prints. How do detectives collect and analyze fingerprints? I put my fingerprint on this balloon. I'm going to blow it up so we can take a look at my fingerprint. my print on this balloon. Look how large it is. You're able to see it and you're able to observe it. Well, do detectives have time to put prints on a balloon? Absolutely not. They instead, they go in and they collect fingerprints off of different objects at a crime scene. Once they collect these fingerprints, they take these prints and they analyze them using technology where they can compare prints to either other uh, people who have maybe committed a crime before or that's a suspect and they've taken their fingerprints. How exactly do you get a set of prints? Let's see how to take a set of prints and I want you to try this also to see how many prints you can collect from your fingers. You will need pencil, you will need a uh, piece of paper or an index card, or if you're like me, you can use an ink pad. All right, let's take our pencil and I'm first just going to use an index card. And if you take your pencil and just rub that pencil on the card or a piece of paper, because we want to get the graphite on here. Make it dark as possible. Take your other index card or another one and you're going to write right hand. When you get ready to take your fingerprints, you don't just put your finger on there and smash. It is a roll method. So you start from the side of your finger and you roll over without lifting and then you lift up. So you want to make sure you get enough of that graphite on there. So let's try it again. The side and roll and then you'll have it. Now, I'm going to take my pointer finger, now I'm going to put it on the card, and I'm going to roll and lift. And 
and you see I have a print. Now, you have a unique print. There are three different types of prints or patterns that you could have when detectives or when anyone is looking at fingerprints. The first type of pattern for fingerprints is called a loop. If you will look here, there's a long loop and this one is angled from the right. So when you're looking um, at the patterns to see what type of uh, pattern you have on your fingerprints, you could notice that there's a wide loop and then there's multiple loops that are going around. The next one is called a whirl. Now, notice the whirl is a complete circle or it's making a circle pattern. And there are other things when the detectives are looking at uh, fingerprints. There are other things that they look for also in the patterns. They look for things called a fork. They look for things called um, a, maybe a dot or a point. There are other things that they look for while they're looking at the prints to help identify that person. And the last one is called an arch. If you look at it, it makes that arch shape. So we have the arch, the whirl, and the loop. Can you have multiple patterns on your fingers? Well, I want you to find out. I want you to continue to make your card with your right hand. Once you complete the card, take a magnifying lens and look carefully at your print to see which type it is. Come back to the video and compare it to the three types of patterns I showed you. When there's a suspect and they're collecting their fingerprints at the police station, they have to complete a form. They don't just put the prints, they even collect, a, put a picture on there, they take the person's first and last name, their height, their blood type, uh, their hair color, their eye color, if they're male or female, and they fill this form out on them, and then they put it in the da database so that if something comes up later, they may have not committed that crime, but now they're in the database where they can collect, where they can compare those prints to new prints that they may collect at another crime scene. So, how do they actually collect the prints at a crime scene? Well, as I told you, because we have oils and amino acid and perspiration on our fingers on these ridges collected in there, when someone picks up an object or move an object, they leave their prints. And so when the detective goes in or the investigator, they use what they called this uh, powder lifting and they have to have some tape and this wand brush. Now, in order for you to do this, you need a brush that's soft, you will need cocoa powder, and you will need someone's prints to lift and some clear tape. There are a couple of prints on here that I can see, probably from me, because I'm the one who's been probably picking this cup more than anyone else. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some of this black powder on the prints. Once I put that powder on there, I'm going to just take this wand and just lightly turn it to remove the excess. So now you can see, look closely. I'm going to take the tape 
and put on here to see if I can lift. I can see where the print is, so I'm going to take my clear tape, press it on here. I want you to look at that. And then I'm going to lift it. Take this and I'm going to put it on a card. Rub it on there and lift it carefully. Voila! I have a print. So you can go around, and I'm going to take my magnifying lens, but you can go around and collect prints. Yes, I can see this print clearly. I wish I could show you on, on there. And this print looks like it has arches on it. All right. So I want you to get you some supplies. And now lifting prints take practice. So the first time you do it, you may not get a print. You may just have some black powder. But if you carefully look, like there's this print here I lifted. Uh, there are a couple more that I can put powder on and lift. Um, there's one here even that I can lift. And so what you want to do is practice lifting the print using your clear tape, the cocoa powder, and a soft brush or a wand like I have and collect those prints. Now, once those prints are collected, you want to identify who those prints belong to. So, you may want to identify if the prints belong to someone in your home, or if you're doing this at school, maybe it's one of your classmates. But you can be able to collect those prints and analyze them against fingerprints that have been printed and taken on a card. review. What are the three different types of patterns for finger prints? What are the three types of patterns? Did you say whirl, loop, and arch? How do investigators collect fingerprints at a crime scene? Think about that and leave me a comment or share with someone else. What is the population of people who have arch fingerprints? If you don't remember, go back and look where I put the fun fact. What are some ways that you can practice collecting fingerprints at home or at school? Think about it and leave me a comment. Fingerprinting is such an exciting, exciting way to collect evidence. But remember, the people who are collecting fingerprints, the investigators, they are experts and they have went to school to study fingerprints. If you want to learn more about fingerprints, I will leave a link below so that you can look up the technology and see how crime scene investigators are out there catching criminals based on a fingerprint database. There are so many things that technology has improved on. If you look back in history when fingerprints were first being collected, they would have to store them in containers all these cards because they didn't have the technology and computers back then to put it in a database but they were still able to catch criminals based on fingerprints well i hope you return next week because we have another activity that's going to be related to crime scene investigation Thank you for joining me today and have a wonderful day, guys. See you next time.